Welcome back to the channel. I am Mick Alphany. Let's jump right into it. I told you, Stellar was deep, deep in the Southeast Asian market because of LightNet. Didn't I, t I told you, I told you, right? Now, also pair with, the, with that, the article that I'm, I'm making a sec another video on for this evening by Ripple, APAC leading the way in instant payments. Countries across Asia Pacific have become global leaders at delivering instant payments through digital banking solutions. So not even Ripple, even Ripple is showing you that they're deep and, and how powerful uh, the Asia, the, the regions in Asia are when it comes to these CBDCs, when it comes to the bank coins and their explosion that is to come, right? So you have that. <laughs> now, I usually will put a document like this in the members only section, so make sure you sign up for that members only section. But I'm gonna give this, this one's so delicious. So delicious, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna share this one with everybody today, all right? This is why it's important to go over all of these PDFs. Sometimes even you might not want to, there's important information in there. Now, for all the bank coin holders, XLM holders, XRP, Algorand, HBAR, Cello, are you ready for what's, a, what's going to come? Now look, like I said, <laughs> they're estimating two to three years up to four years, according to Ripple, and I think five years for whatever other document. You guys have the documents you know. So yeah, it's gonna take some time, but are you ready for that generational wealth? No guarantees, and this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Let's dig into this document and see what they say. Because for an entire year, I've been telling you that they need the bank coins. I was telling, I've been screaming it from the rooftops. They need this new technology. They need the new system. They need Algorand. They need Stellar. They need, literally need them. That money, ah, it's coming. I just, the victory is so close. I could reach out and touch it. I could touch it. Let's dig into this. This is from Jorgova, Jorgovanka Tab, Tab, Tabaka, Tabakovic, my goodness, my goodness, I know. Um, my Everything is rusty for me right now. <laughs> this is from Jorgovanka Tabakovic. It's titled, The Digitalization System Upgrade Delivering the Digital Dividend. This is from the Bank of International Settlements and it starts, it begins as such. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, Welcome to the National Bank of Serbia. We are the hosts today, but this event is organized by our partners from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. This means everything you just heard means take what they're about to say very seriously. Okay, let's continue on. Therefore, I'd like to welcome Mr. Colangeli, whom I have met at the Koponik Business Forum, as well as Mr. Sanfi and Mr. Plek Plekanov, who are the face of the EBRD before us today. So now we have some more names that we can look up if we really, really desire to. It says, I will focus on the fourth chapter of the report, FinTech Banks and FinTech and Banks in Transition, which pertains to the digitalization of financial systems and the effects which the implementation of the new technologies has on the financial system as we know it. It is old news that over the past several years, there have been substantial global changes in the financial services sector. Banks, which are traditional part participants in, the, in this market, are increasingly joined by new institutions from the technological sector. That's like Ripple, Stellar, <laughs> Algorand, Hedera, Cello. They can't be denied. Let's continue on here offering innovative products. They have to say innovative because the legacy system is everything but that, right? And the legacy system is terrible. It's not, it's, there, there's nothing forward moving about that legacy system. So of course they're, they're seen as innovative. Offering innovative products. We are talking about FinTech as well as international tech giants. Notably in the social media sphere, the so-called big tech. How do banks react to their emergence? 
They have a choice. This is key right here. This is key. They have a choice to either treat the new market participants as competition, which you all have uh, seen sort of their uh, back and forth. They were indecisive. They didn't really know how to approach everything at first. This was like last year. Then you saw them start to move over to the side where they're, they're accepting now that they cannot deny these particular technologies. They cannot deny the bank coins. They absolutely need them and they see the dominance of them in the future. Let's continue on because they're going to corroborate what I've been saying for an entire year. Let's continue on here. So it says they have a choice to either treat the new market participants as competition or at least as an incentive that would encourage them to speed up their own work on innovations and development of advanced services. The second choice is to welcome these companies as partners. Let's stop right there. What has the Bank of International Settlements, who is putting out this document, who set up all of these different panels between banks because they're a supervisory ent entity, what have they been telling these other banks? From all the PDFs that we've read, PDF. So these, this is factual. They have been screaming at these banks to partner with the NBFIs, non-banking financial uh, institutions, with the fintechs. They've been telling them to partner up. They've been telling them to use these innovations because, first of all, why would you? It's, it's just illogical to want to do the things yourself as far as these different types of innovations and coming up with and putting together these different teams that are going to invent something for you, spending all of this ex excessive amount of money. When you have distributed ledger technologies, you have decentralized protocols that you can conscript and use that are being handed to you, that are being handed to you. Now with that, either you you can use infrastructure that's provided to you by somebody like MTech, IBM, Ripple, and they're just handing it to you. Uh, you can save a ton of money. You can move money more efficiently to data that's going back and forth. There's no slippage. There's no loss in data. You have all of this, all of these benefits. You need that. They want it. They can't deny it. The Bank of International Settlements has been telling them to partner, not telling them that they should, that, just the, uh, uh, that it's optional to partner and, you know, maybe it might work out in a different way. Absolutely not. They've been saying we need to partner with these um, fintechs, with these MBFIs, and that uh, we're going to try to establish a myriad of connections between the commercial banks and other supervised entities with those particular uh, MBFIs, non-banking financial institutions, which like I said, you can read those and all of those PDFs are out there for you to read. You can go to Bank, Bank of International Settlements, and type in CBD or something like that and just read those documents, okay? But let's continue on here. They're telling you that they need the banking coins. <laughs> I don't know how much more assurance people can need. That, in my humble opinion, I could be wrong. That tsunami of money is on the way. This, the stuff we've been covering lately from these documents, oh my goodness beautiful, beautiful for the future. They're telling us that money is coming because they need it. What does it do to that price? What does it do to that price? If those banks have to use the banking coins, if they're running payroll over those banking coins, interbank payments, cross-border payments, that's not even taking account, into account the business to business, cross-border remittances. It is getting, is getting disgustingly Beautiful. <laughs> I use those two opposite words together, right? It's the only time you can really use them. It's getting disgustingly beautiful. The stacks of money are getting bigger. But anyway, let's continue on here. Let me try to focus. I'm a little bit excited. This is huge. Let's continue on here. The second choice is to, uh, is to welcome these companies as partners and to make full use of the effects of such synergy on the development of society. Things are about to get epic in my humble opinion. In the modern age, which requires fast adjustment to client needs, everyone's creating niche markets where they have a competitive edge. And as long as society as a whole is benefiting from, cha from changes that do not threaten stability, that's where regulation comes in. We need that regulation. We need fair regulation though. We don't need what they're doing now, regulation by enforcement. We need fair regulation and more than that, the clarity that it brings. Because then that ensures that the banks and everybody else has, uh, uh, how did they put it here? That they have stability. Nothing's going to be destabilized. We're not here to upset the apple cart. We're here to make billions of dollars. And it's so close. But let's continue on reading this document because they're telling. 
They're telling. Let's continue on here. And as long as society as a whole is benefiting from changes that do not threaten stability and yet save time and money, that is, ah, that's the bank coins. We're getting so close. I'm just getting too, I'm getting too excited. I'm going to calm down. Don't worry about it. But something like this gets me fired up and tells you how close it is, how close that generational wealth is. Let's continue on. And yet save time and money. They will be one of the factors of development. And this is a shared objective of all of us in this area. Central banks are not mere passive onlookers adjusting to new circumstances, but are often the ones that create new circumstances. Providing regulatory and infrastructural basis for financial sector development. This is why the, the Bank of International Settlements has stepped in as the leader. I, IMF is right behind them. Of course, IMF has slightly different views on it, but they're all pushing for the same goal. OK, that's why that's happening. It is true that everyone can hope for a miracle, but it's also true that responsible policymakers cannot rely on mir miracles. Instead, they solely rely on work, knowledge, policy coordination and proactivity. Pretty much what they're saying is, listen, we need to get to work. We need to ensure stability. We need regulatory clarity. We need to make sure that there's infrastructure set up. We're going to play an active role. As you just heard, they're not going to be passive onlookers. The banks are about to get more active. Good. I'm glad to hear that. The central banks are about to get more active. And I am looking forward to it. And I think we've been seeing that, haven't we? Look at how many PDFs about digit the digitalization of the future. Central bank digital currencies. Heck, they even have a new type of CBDC that they're trying to do. But don't worry about that. We're going to get cover that in the future. We did cover that in the members only section in one of those important documents. But look at how many PDFs they've been coming out with. They've had something new almost every single week. And a new bank is coming out and telling us how much they need this, this new uh, financial system every week. It's getting very interesting. Let me tell you something. Bank coins are not something that is moving out of my coal wallet. That's not going to happen. No, we're too close. The money's getting too big. There's too much on the line. We're so close to victory. In my humble opinion, I only speak for myself. I, I don't tell you what to do. Whether you buy or sell means nothing to me, but I know what I know what's coming. I know what what is uh, what's close at hand. Victory is there. Let's continue on here. OK, it says and it is precisely in difficult times that we can see how each of us has done their job and how successful we have been in doing it. Serbia did not need an incentive for this because digitalization has been among our strategic goals for almost a decade. Today, the National Bank of Serbia is a guarantor of stability in the full sense of that word. At the same time, we are also a cautious regulator that seeks to strike a balance between safety and development. The National Bank of Serbia is among the central banks that were first to recognize the importance of the process of digitalization of financial services, which is why we were prepared in terms of both infrastructure and regulations to face the challenges brought on by this particular redacted happening. We have introduced a state of art instant payment system, and we did not stop there. We continue to develop it further by introducing a number of additional services. That's what I'm telling you. They're going to use the bank coins in a myriad of different ways. Look, what you see in a legacy system and what they had attempted and yet failed to do, obviously they failed, where they used a myriad of different um, instant payment uh, options, right? Same thing they're going to do. And they use a different, uh, different mechanisms one for out, one for in, one for data, a different messaging. Um, of course, they're bringing everything into one messaging accord with ISO 20022. But, but in the past, they tried different things. Okay, that same thing is going to be mirrored here. So maybe you have XLM used for some things, XRP used for other things. Then you have smart contracts. You need the best of the best with the smart contracts. You have Algorand. Right next to Algorand, you have HBAR. There's nobody close to them when it comes to smart contracts. There's no Ethereum. No. A, uh, uh, Hedera, yes. HBAR, yes. Algorand, yes. They're going to dominate when it comes to smart contracts. And I see these banks using all of these in combination, which hence, hence why you have MBDCs, multi uh, or MCBDCs, multi central bank digital currencies. They all do different things. It is getting hot. 
and the money the money is starting to heat up starting to smell smell smells like money you ever smell money in the summer stack of cash in the summer i don't know it's just unique mm. aroma when it's new this is a unique aroma to it i'm starting to get a lot of that maybe it's just me my dreams i don't know i want that victory bad let's continue on here Everything has been achieved in the past 10 years, uh, that has been achieved in the past 10 years is perhaps best illustrated by the fact that the annual number of transactions performed using M-Banking services increased 100 times. So even with this legacy system offering, it has increased 100 times. Imagine how much more that would increase with lowered, I'm talking about unbelievably lowered intermediary fees when it comes to the bank coins. Let's say they're using XRP, XLM, Imagine how much more transactions people will be willing to make when their transaction fees are almost not, almost uh, negated completely. That volume is going to shoot through the roof. When the volume shoots through the roof and you have that paired with a high transaction value, what does it do to that price? What does it do to that price? That price is going to raise. It's just logical. <laughs> I got too much energy right now. I'm like... <laughs> it's just logical that high amount of volume listen some of these bank coins <laughs> i'm telling you now there's there's enough money to go, go around and i i know they specifically chose the circulating supplies because they wanted to leave the door open for the legacy system they didn't want to completely dominate them and and i and um what do, you, what do you call that like a sort of um they didn't want to turn them completely against the new system and feel like they're being pushed out. No, they left the door a little bit open so the legacy system can remain in some capacity, which a, a lot of the legacy system, as I said, I believe are going to congeal, congeal with the new financial system. But as of right now, the new financial system cannot be stopped. Now, this document is extremely important because, because it corroborates what all the other heads of all the other banks, uh, commercial as well as central bank, have been saying over the past few weeks. They all are conceding to the new financial system. And what does that mean? That means that there is a tsunami of bank money coming into the bank coins. And there is no crypto protocol there is no crypto coin who has ever seen that much money come into it. And it will, which, which then means what? That, that means that there is a parabolic run waiting to happen. A flood of money waiting to happen that no one has ever seen before. And there will be no comparison to it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity where the banks are going to flood a particular system with money. And if you like what you saw with all the legacy system, crypto offerings, Bitcoin, that was cute. Ethereum, that was cute. The banks didn't flood them with money. The banks did not flood them with money. What happens when those millions and millions and trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars a day in transaction value, if you're talking about like Fed wire, things like that, SWIFT, which... XRP was designed to replace, which XLM I showed you, showed you. This is not just talk. I gave you factual evidence. I gave you the websites. I gave you the documents. XLM was built, not built. XLM is desired by many, many big institutions to replace SWIFT. So now you have XRP literally telling you they wanted to replace SWIFT. And you have XLM where IBM wants them to replace SWIFT. Um, Lightnet wants them to replace SWIFT in Southeast Asia. What does it do to that price? Trillions of dollars a day, if we're talking SWIFT, they're supposed to replace SWIFT. What does it do to that price if they actually succeed? What does it do to that price even if they take a little bit of it? You think the price is going to stay at 20 cents, 74 cents, 80 cents? you believe that? Do you believe that price is going to stay at $2, $3? Really? You believe that? Trillions of dollars per day, possibly, if, if they can succeed, even take a modicum of SWIFT's market. Or what happens if they, they're actually, 
they partner up with SWIFT. That's highly likely, in my opinion. Looking at all of the different meetings that they're having with the United States government, as far as Ripple, and how deeply they are actually, not just meetings, they're ingrained in the United States government right now. What do I mean by that? They have, look, look, they have so many connections. Connections are ingrainments, okay? Those connections do not end. They don't. Professional connections don't end. You can always see somebody that you work with later, you had a business deal with 10 years ago and such like that, and they're still, if you had a great relationship and that's where it ended because the contract was up, then I'll tell you what, we can still do business in the future if you're still willing to do business and we may be in different sectors. We may be now working for private industry instead of public. Who knows? We can still do business. We still know that that guy, he knows how to close deals and he's a good negotiator and so am I. We're going to come to the table. We're still going to do business. So any relationships that were had, like what Rosie Rios had, her name is on all the money. She works with Ripple. They have a member on the Faster Payments Council of the United States, Ripple. Stella has been doing so many meetings with the government. <laughs> so, there is a possibility, no guarantees, possibility, that XLM XRP could be working with those particular payment systems in the United States to some capacity, in any capacity, even a modicum of it. What does it do to that price? Muy linda, mi gente. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to, I, I may go deeper into this document. I have a few documents that I have to read over and um, prepare a new members only video coming up soon. I'm going to make that a really good one. It's going to be really good. And if you saw the meetings that the Bank of International Settlements has coming up, oh, it's about to be a beautiful time. They're going to have so much new information and thoughts for us to comb over. And we definitely will. We will scrape those PDFs and we will find everything that there is to be found when it comes to the bank coins and that generational wealth. No guarantees. And this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I don't ever want to be. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time. Let's get to the money.